Greetings friends. You are interested in running shoes? The upper, the midsole, the outsole? That is why you are here. Now for the first time, we are bringing you the full story. All of the evidence from Strava, the secret testimony of the tired runners who have tested these shoes. My friends, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Can your heart stand the shocking facts in this comparison between the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed? A bit of an Ed Wood style intro there for you. If you haven't ever watched a film that's directed by Ed Wood, you should go and do that right now. Well, after this video anyway. Ed Bud here and welcome to a comparison of the Saucony Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed. Let's get straight into it. So in terms of upper, there are a couple of areas between the shoes that add to that weight difference. There's about a 10 gram weight difference for me in my UK size 11, US size 12 between the Pro and the Speed. You've got a far more built up heel counter here. You've got this sort of plastic piece in a T shape around the back of the heel and there's a traditional heel counter right around the back too. It's actually quite rigid that plastic section here. The tongue on the speed's far more padded, both at the very top where the laces fasten and further down through the tongue as well. As is that gusseting that appears on either side of the tongue that goes around your foot. I found over some longer runs that these mesh sections do absorb a lot more sweat and a lot more moisture. So if you are in a climate where that is a bit of a concern, could be a bit of a deal breaker for you. Always takes on six, seven grams, no matter what really. The upper on the Pro is much lighter and much more vented. There's loads of tiny little vent holes all across the shoe, both in the toe box and the side. The tongue is a lot thinner, slightly less padded, and that may be very preferable to some runners. There's a few shoes I've tried recently where the tongue's been very thin, and I've found that the laces tend to cut through onto the top of your foot a little bit. I haven't experienced that in the Pro, but it's just something to bear in mind. I find there's a little less give in the upper on the Pro. A few people have mentioned that they found the uppers quite similar on these two shoes, but I beg to differ. Perhaps if you're running in a much warmer climate all the time, then the Pro might be preferable for you. There's less give in the upper, but I find that it's a far more flexible one, probably due to the reduced thickness. Those fetching Saucony motifs here are less filled in on the Pro. They're solid here. Maybe that adds a tiny little bit of weight. I don't know. It does seem to provide a little bit more structure to the upper. An interesting thing though, they seem to have switched out the laces between the two models. They're a little bit thinner on the Pro. The ones on the Speed are a little bit more flexible. A little bit more uh, elasticated, I suppose. I find these grip the lace eyelets a little bit better. I think on foot, the upper on the speed is a little bit more present. So perhaps if you're racing, you want to eke out the absolute best from yourself. If performance is right at the top of your priority list, then you might opt for the slightly less present upper on the Pro. I think in a race in wet conditions, the Pro is going to provide a slightly less absorbent solution. It just isn't going to hang on to that water or moisture anywhere near as much as the speed. So in terms of upper, I'm going to give the award to the Pro this time around. In terms of midsole, it's down to the paint and the plate. A nylon plate here in the speed and the carbon plate in the Pro. You're going to get a slightly more rigid feel in the midsole of the Endorphin Pro. I say slightly because it is very, very slight. It's marginal. At pace, you do feel a little more push from the Pro on toe off, but in terms of the actual midsole material, they're very similar. Don't forget though, you don't always want to run fast. If you're buying a shoe and you want to train in it as well, the Speed might be a better option. The Pro is probably going to make you want to run a little bit faster. That isn't always what you want to be doing. Running those slower miles are really important to build that base mileage up. I think the Speed presents a slightly more forgiving version of the midsole implementation that you're going to find in the Pro. As the Zoom Fly used to be a really great training partner to the Vaporfly 4%, I think the Speed does a very similar thing. You'll become accustomed to the feel, perhaps not so much in the upper, but certainly in the midsole and the outsole. Although this time there's a much closer difference in terms of weight, I think mine are about nine grams different. It was much more considerable between the Zoom Fly and the Vaporfly 4% Flynet. I think the Pebax based midsole here in both the Endorphin Pro and the Speed present a stable platform. Vastly more stable than your next percent. The Fuel Cell TC, but not quite the same underfoot certainty that you'll find in the Asics Meta Racer or the Adidas Adi Zero Pro. 
I think if you're after a very light, stable and cushioned midsole, perhaps for racing and some longer runs at tempo paces, then the Pro could be your Chesney Hawks. Uh, he had a hit in the late 80s, I think it was, with a track called The One and Only. But if you're on a budget for a great priced, fast and forgiving midsole that'll pretty much do it all, I think the Speed could be the one for you. So I'm going to give the midsole crown to the Speed. I think it's just got a better, wider, broader range of appeal. Outsole now. So I've inspected, prodded and examined. But there's little or no difference here. Not that I can feel or see. Both seem excellently durable. Traction on road and pavement are great. No worries on gravel. Even does a half decent job on grass. I can see the uneven and patterned carbon rubber pieces here. Last in a fair old time, I don't think it's going to really be too much of a consideration. After 50 miles or so in the Pro, there's little or no wear there to speak of. No change in grip or traction. There's nothing between the Speed and the Pro here. For outsole, it's a draw in this aspect, as they're pretty much one and the same. We've got to talk value now. At £165 and £190, is the additional £35 worth it? The differences between the Speed and the Pro are very marginal, it has to be said. I think far more marginal than the other tiered shoe series from other manufacturers. I think slight differences to the plate feel in the Endorphin Pro and a very slightly lighter upper. It's just a little bit more breathable. There's less there in the upper that's going to soak up moisture and hang on to it so you don't have to cart it around with you during a race, which nobody wants to do. Everybody wants to minimise what they've got during a race. Well, I certainly do. I can't stand carrying extra stuff around with me, even when I'm training. I'm very much a minimalist in my approach. There's not an awful lot here that makes the two shoes stand out from each other. I think perhaps if you're new to plated shoes, then the speed is quite a good entry point. I think it might be a little more palatable and a little more enjoyable to people that might want to use it on a more regular basis. Could be a good starting point, I guess. Carbon plate shoes, I don't think, are for everybody. I feel the speed perhaps is a slightly more forgiving, less in-your-face version. I think more elite or able athletes will be looking for the lightest and the best. But I think in all honesty, the speed for me and many others will do a great job and at a slightly cheaper price. I think for value, though, they are too close for the great majority of runners to see an awful lot of difference. I think if you're right up at the very top of your game, the Pro's gonna make a difference. But in terms of value, I think that the Speed is actually a better shoe. Let's not forget that the majority of runners out there aren't elite runners. They're just people who enjoy running. They're in running clubs. Those are the vast majority of people that Saucony are probably trying to sell shoes to. So for value, it's the Speed for me. Hope you've enjoyed this comparison, guys. If you agree with me or not, please let me know in the comments below. I love reading your comments and I shall try and respond to as many of them as I can. A musical interlude. So I've been listening to this fantastic album from Steve Maltmus. I believe it came out in 2001. I could be wrong. It's fantastic. Church on White is one of my favourite tunes on here. It was really pleasant listening earlier on in my eight mile effort in the endorphin speeds. There's a nice bouncy vibe about this whole album and that typical Steve Malkmus bizarre lyrical style. You never quite know what he's going to come out with. And he's still doing that to this day. I think a lot of people know Steve Malkmus from Pavement, but as it turns out, he's actually released more albums after that than he did with Pavement. And they're all really great as well in their own way. So do check that one out, that was Steve Maltmus's debut album. Thanks for watching through to the very end of the video guys, I very much appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when we launch the new videos. It helps the channel out a huge amount as well if you give this video a thumbs up like if you've enjoyed it. And don't forget to share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.